are here. So there's Sean Tall. You've got Bev and a newcomer, Kenny. Uh, Tell us a little bit more about where we actually are. So we are at Cafe Mutu, which is located in Tainamagar. Uh, it's a good brunch spot. You can see over here that is a uh, uh, tree. Yeah, what's the what's the theme here? What what what's the style? So it's uh it's African theme. So I guess we'll see in the food in a bit. Bev, you've been to this place as well, right? Yes. What are your thoughts? Um, I usually really go for the goat curry and also the fish curry. So I'm a big curry fan. Okay. Yeah. But what did you order today? Today I ordered an utu bowl, which is super healthy, full of quinoa, goat and cheese, more breakfasty stuff. More breakfasty stuff. The curries here are really good, but I, I'm hoping someone at the table actually got a curry. No, I got the. I thought one of you guys would have no. gotten the curry. <laughs> I also went with the uh, pulled pork because it sounds really good. Keep in mind it's like 10.45, well now it's 11 o'clock, but it's too early for like a full lunch, at least in my opinion. Chantal ended up getting like a sweet thing. What did you get? It's like ricotta, ricotta pancakes. We also got some really good coffee, so we'll take a look at that later. I got a, um, I got the special white cold brew here. You see the ice cubes are a little um, brown. It's got some color to it. That's because uh, it has some coffee in it. So when uh, the ice melts, the drink is not diluted. And the sweet tooth. Alright, you, you two have like the complete opposite meals. Yeah. We got super healthy here and we got absolutely sweet with some sort of melting ice cream on it. Don't worry, I'm gonna have half of that probably. So these glasses are really cool and all because they have that unique look to it, but they are really annoying to drink. I've literally spilled half my water. You gotta drink it at the corner as Kenny mentioned, but unfortunately I didn't realize that till all the water's on my lap. How was everything? Food was delicious. Uh, my mocha was really good as well. Uh, my food was really healthy, but it was good. It wasn't too heavy, nor was it too light. And the coffee is very strong, but highly recommended. I can go for another one of those. I can, yeah, I can eat more. So Kenny's already starting to think about um, Havala, which is like another spot for like coffee, tea. And I love Havala. We're done for now. We're gonna make our way to our science museum. Uh, weather looks okay, so we're gonna walk this food off, and then afterwards we'll see how we feel. I'm sure we're gonna be hungry. If you feel like you wanna go all night, just lose your. So we're currently walking in the CBD area. This is like downtown where all the businesses are. The good thing about walking around here in a group setting is on the weekends it's usually really quiet. So the streets themselves are pretty much dead. And on top of that, the streets are also wider here. So you don't have to worry about like large crowds and taking up too much space. In the heart of CBD, we have this really cool building. This is called Lao Passat. It's one of the hawker centers. Um, so there's a lot of good cheap food in this building. And it's kind of interesting because like right around it, you just see all these towering skyscrapers of the downtown area. And as you can see here, there's just constant construction. So like, Probably in the next couple of years, there's gonna be another building right here. So we've made it now to the promontory. I think I'm saying that right. Um, but I really enjoy this walk because the views are gorgeous and it's actually really empty out today on the weekend, surprising because it's been raining so much that today's like the first sunny day. Um, but you can see the Art Science Museum over there. It's really not that bad of a walk and I'm still feeling extremely full from breakfast, so this is totally good. Feel the morning, the sun arrive. We don't have to fight it. We don't have to fight it. It's unusually quiet today, especially for it being so nice out. And I'm not sure if it's just because it's still a little bit early and people still haven't gotten ready for brunch yet. So here we are right underneath the Art Science Museum. Um, this cool building is like got an odd flowery shape to it, but you can see it from across the Marina Bay. And well, they used to at night have these really cool light shows and they'd actually project these cool little images and things around the um, actual building. 
You guys ready for this? I'm ready, man. Alright, so we just entered. It's a little dark, but um, the first thing you see is this really cool room that's just all projected and there's a little bit of um, animation with it so you can kind of interact with it. We don't have to We don't have to signifies what are your thoughts 11 years of social distancing the environment goes to shit all right what did you just find out what the actual countdown meant visualizes the sea levels brought about climate change prayers that we make it to mars before then kenny likes to just try and interact with everything so i think anytime there's some sort of projector he's going to try and do something destroyed everything we paid $28 for the tickets but we got three exhibits with it um, thankfully I'm a Marina Bay member and I actually had two buy one get one deal so it was actually 14 bucks each pretty reasonable So twilight If you feel like You wanna go all night Just lose yourself tonight Feel the morning The sun arrive Everything here is projection and colors and really cool ambient music This looks absolutely fun but I don't think we're short enough so <laughs> can't go in there we don't have to fight it we don't have to fight it we don't have to no. we don't have to no. we don't have to fight it we don't have to fight it we don't have to no. okay so this is where everyone takes pictures apparently it's called crystal universe exactly 178,200 led lights all right so that's a lot of led lights in there hopefully they're energy efficient <laughs> leds are usually this is so trippy i'm not sure if these are mirrors or what but i'm not gonna touch it because i don't want to get in trouble even above it just like endless Perfect angle, Bev. You got it. Work that angle. No. Work that angle. No, can you not? Sorry, I'm embarrassing her. We don't have to know. This is absolutely so cool. There's a twilight. If you feel like you wanna go. Upper hand. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. Oh, that's a nice one. This that's a nice one. Wow. Leg up, leg up, <laughs> leg up, leg up. <laughs> There's only one difference between art and science. In science, the universe is in control. In art, you are. Wow. That's, that's deep. Oh, yeah, that's deep. Just lose yourself tonight. Feel the morning. The sun oh. Alright, so a little bit of a history lesson here too, but um, back in the 1950s when Singapore was going under redevelopment, the Prime Minister Lee Kuan Yew coined the term Garden City, and as you can see there was like a whole urban renewal plan where a lot of greenery was planted and it is definitely visible today. Singapore is for sure one of the most green looking cities in the world.
basically what you're seeing here is a representation of a few different Southeast Asian countries. And if you were an impoverished person living in that country, this is essentially what you could afford. We're not looking at the next chapter of Fifty Shades of Grey here, but instead what we're seeing is a representation of sort of the haze that was brought upon by um, fires and burning in Indonesia. A lot of people tend to think that Singapore is a very futuristic city, but there's still very much a normal life here as well. The next one in this little circular area looks like the, what is it called? Planet, planet or plastic. So I think we're gonna learn a lot in that one. So you can see here like these images that we're seeing, it just represents a ton of like plastic that's being consumed and what the impacts have for the ocean and our environment. So here we have a look at the history of plastic, essentially how it came to be, why it was such a modern marvel when they discovered it, and how it's benefited everyday lives for us as humans. All right, now that we've learned the benefits and why plastic is so important for us as humans, we're about to learn where the negative impact comes in. We will need in the morning, we will wake up, just hold off. All right, so for all those people who get plastic carriers or use plastic shopping bags, let's try and avoid that a little bit more. That's what I'm learning here, and I mean, I've always been anti-plastic as much as possible, but this really sheds some light on the impact that we have on the environment. I'm a fan of this map because it does indicate where plastic typically comes from. Now, as you know, or if you don't know, plastic never actually decomposes. And the reason why there's so much plastic litter all over the place is because most of the world is made up of an ocean where the currents just take the plastic and spreads it all across the different parts of the world. Even in the middle of the Pacific, there's a lot of these uninhabited islands. And apparently this island's beach contains over 38 million pieces of rubbish and the majority of that being plastic. All your problems, we don't need them now. There's so much time to take up. So three part act here, we've done the introduction, we've learned about why plastic is so important for us. The conflict was the negative impact of plastic now that we're facing and now we've got our resolution. So let's take a look. I mean, one of the biggest ones right here is recycling. Uh, honestly, I don't know if Singapore does a good job or not, but I find it very difficult at times to find recycling bins for our plastics and glasses. So one of the challenges here though is there's a lot of different plastic types and not all of them are actually easy to recycle. We have scientists now exploring different types of materials that break down faster or are compostable. There's a twilight If you feel like you wanna go So with the current pandemic situation, this is an interesting exhibit because it actually talks to you a little bit more about how masks are produced, how long they take to break down. No. You do disposable? I do reusable. All right, what do you think? I feel like I was being shamed. Are you a big plastic consumer? I feel like I don't really use that much plastic. It's a good thing you're using reusable masks. Re reusable. reusable mask. Yeah. Reusable mask. <laughs> it was a very educational um, exhibit, really looking at like how plastic really affects all of us and the environment, you know. Really good exhibit that everyone should come visit and maybe take the pledge to use less plastic. Back like in Boston, for example, they actually have a ban on plastics altogether. So anytime you go to a shop or something like that, you're either gonna have a paper bag where you actually have to pay extra for, or you should be bringing your own reusable bags. Kenny, tell us, is this, is this plastic or paper? I believe it's both plastic and paper. We're trying to figure out which one 
to toss these in because it does have like a plastic resin on it, which makes it that firm material, but I don't know. And if you put it on paper, paper it can't like actually be recycled properly because of the plastic resin. Uh, but it will mess with some process. Something's gonna happen when we toss these. I think I'm just gonna make a decision to put paper. No, yeah. no, 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 <laughs> no expert. <laughs> so this is the reason why we came earlier and went straight to Future World because there's a queue. Feel the morning, the sun arrive. We don't have to fight it. We don't have to fight it. We don't have to. We don't have to. We're now outside walking towards Chimes. So we're gonna go hit up Kavala. It's about a 25 minute walk, but it's cold enough inside Marina Bay that now we're enjoying this nice hot breeze. So we're still on our way to Havala. Um, the benefit of when you do get really hot though is there's always some sort of underground passage or mall that you can run walk through. So we've actually figured out a route that takes us pretty much the rest of the way to Havala underground in air conditioning. All right, we are now in Chimes. Chimes is a great place. Why? It's got a lot of different restaurants, cafes. It, I, it used to be a uh, monastery for nuns, I believe. Uh, the wedding scene and crazy, crazy yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. In this, in this chapel. Yeah. We don't have to fight it. We don't have to fight it. We don't have to. No. Or one thing that's really great about this place is you have some different seating areas and arrangements. I love this area. You take off your shoes, you sit down like in a traditional Japanese house. And they use this machine which is pretty efficient. So once you sit down, you just select your items, put in your table number, pay here, and then they'll bring it to you. Chantal and I both ordered two matcha drinks. Total came to be almost 15 sing. So not the cheapest thing, but the stuff is actually really good. They have really good gelato. I think it's gelato, maybe it's ice cream but they have a black sesame one that's really good. We don't have to know. Let's forget about day. Live in the moment of our change. We don't need to fight it all alone. Pretty typical when you're in Singapore, you'll sit down at a place for drinks or food, and the very first thing you talk about is where are we getting food next? So we just decided we're going to grab dinner after this at some point, somewhere a little bit further away so we can, again, walk this off. So we'll figure out where we're going later. No, this place is great, but it would be even better if there were metal straws here. Yeah. It's a plastic straw. The museum made me feel so ashamed. So ashamed. Alright, so we've decided on some Thai boat noodles. They all kind of look the same to me. Yeah, they all look the same, but they all have some sort of different broth yeah, in it. Yeah, some of them have an egg in them. I, I think that's the only visible difference I see. Yeah. Thank you very much. Thank you. But it's but, actually eight different kinds. Yeah. There's eight different kinds here. Yeah, so eight different kinds. We got some chicken wings too. Dollar fifty each, so it's really cheap. Yeah. We just ended up looking at the menu and saying, "All right, let's just order three of every type of noodle." All right, so they're all coming out now, and we've got like no table space. Twenty-four bowls, I guess. Um, so we just basically got to eat and stack them. Let's go. All right, just an update here. We've only been here for maybe like ten minutes, and. Yeah, we've done, that we've done some damage. It really isn't that bad. I each each of these is about a bite size, so. If we really want to. Chantal and I came in here not hungry, but that's what, her fourth bowl? Yeah. <laughs> we lucked out because now there's a huge queue and we didn't have to wait at all. All oh, right, so we're now heading to the MRT to drop Kenny off. It's yeah. been a pleasure. Today has been a long but fun day. Yes. It was great having you guys. I'm ready for that. Thanks for having me. Turns <laughs> a twilight. If you feel